Hello gang, hello friends, hello gang friends. Welcome back, thank you for joining me today for a coronation celebration. I was sent some more goodies from Crystal Parade. Would you like to see them? Okay. So this is the Preciosa, Preciosa Mix Shapes NHF Empress Gin. Oh, look at them. That the One of the blue ones we're going to use today. They're absolutely stunning. Um, you can get money off at Crystal Parade using this code and the link in the description. These ones, are these called Navette? This shape, I think. These are AB ones. And then we have the King's Crown Mix, which I'm very excited about. One, because it's freaking gorgeous. And two, because we're doing a coronation set. Yay! How, how pitiful does my solo yay sound? Yay! Um, this has some green, some sort of fuchsia, and then some navy. And the plum ones there were heart-shaped ones that were pointy backs. And look at these mother trucking beasts. Oh, they're so amazing. They're huge. I will think of something to do with them. I guess just a nail just covered in massive crystals. They're so gorgeous. That big, massive fuchsia one. Oh, I love it. So that's all from the same collection, the King's Crown mix. And then I'm also going to be using, these are what they've already sent me before um, that I've put in a wheel. So we'll be using some of those as well. And I'm going to use the the Vetsy Crystal Picker Upper, which has quickly become my favourite one because I like the pointy end. It also doubles as a super tiny dotting tool. And I discovered this! <gasps> Genius! So I'm assuming you can buy replacement bits for that. I was very impressed. <laughs> so we are starting with Ready Set Ski from Madame Glam, another place that you can get money off from using this information. Um, as well as Vetsy, and McCart, and Born Pretty. Everything's in the description. Always check out the description because I've got discount codes for a whole bunch of places um, that you can use. You could be saving money. So we're going to do two coats of this and then we're going to velvet top coat it. And we're going to paint the new cipher for King Charles III. And I'm going to... Oh, look at that velvet. Lovely. So we're going to take the white gel paint, which I discovered their gel paint. Well, actually, I've only tried it with the white. Their gel paints work perfectly for chroming on two. So we're going to paint our details in white and then we'll turn them gold. So I'm starting this with a D and then I'm, so I'm breaking it down. This is the Charles III cipher. So we did a D and then we did a long line to make it a P and the sort of leg of the P is thicker as is the curved part of the D but not the top and the bottom of the D remain thinner. Just make noticing the different thicknesses in areas of the font um, and just breaking it down like that. The top of the what is currently a P poked out a bit but then joined the leg with a curve and then the bottom curves to a straight bit. <laughs> oh, crikey. I've sped this up because I paint really slowly, which is why it looks like my hands are really shaky. My hands are a bit shaky anyway, but it looks worse here. Some people have commented on it before negatively, <laughs> which I don't quite understand. But uh, if it does bother you, well, I don't know, get over it. Well, they're my hands. <laughs> so with the C, it goes behind the first leg of what will be an R, but in front of the second one. So I'm leaving a little gap to show that they're sort of interlocking, because if I just did it straight up to it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see which goes under or over what. And then just doing a big C around there and then noting that they come down into little points that are straight on the, at the end. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to describe very well what I'm doing in this video. Luckily, you can see it. Um, 
and it's a long video so I've got some facts lined up for us and hopefully they're interesting. Some of them are funny or maybe they're not funny and I find them funny <laughs> but I will try and sort of explain as much as I feel I can um, whilst trying to make sense. So the second leg of the R goes behind the C so we're leaving a gap between the R and letting the C go all the way through it and then I'm curing that a full cure I'm taking the magician series which is from Vetsy um, with the chromes and we're using that gold one so we've cured this white gel paint for a minute and then it takes the chrome <gasps> I'm so happy I've discovered this because this will come in really handy for doing little chromey details in future so we'll get that on and then we'll dust off you can see that some has stuck a bit to the blue background but that's fine because we're going to because we've already topped the blue with the velvet top coat and now we're going to shiny top over all the gold bits so then we can wipe and we'll wipe off any of the gold bits that have stuck to the blue that haven't been covered by the shiny top coat so any gold bits that haven't been topped will wipe off like this yay i'm not overly happy with the c um because i couldn't get the thickness right on the uh, left side of the c because there wasn't enough nail but it will do and then we're doing three tiny little lines and then joining joining them at the top and the bottom they aren't joined up but I couldn't do them. I tried to do them each separately, but it just wasn't, it wasn't happening for me. So we joined them all together. That's fine. Charles obviously didn't think, didn't consider us nail techs having to paint his cipher on teeny tiny nails by hand. So it's going to be a, a little bit different. Well, only that bit. And then we're going to do the crown, which is similar to the crown. Well, it's the same as the crown when I did the Elizabeth um cipher which i did a lot smaller so why couldn't i do oh because i needed to put something inside the r so i started with the d to determine how much room i had to do the roman numerals so with this crown i'm doing a straight line because it's got stuff all down the center so we'll start with a straight line marker and then we're curving sort of following the curve of the c and then we're just going to do curves and join them up on the sides and I'm just thickening, thickening it, thickening it a little bit. And then we're going to add um, dots around those curved lines. And then before going on to the next step, I decided to cure it, chrome it and top it. Because if I do mess up the next step, then I can wipe without taking anything off. I, if I hadn't... If I carried on without curing, if I messed up the middle bit and I wiped, I'd end up messing up the outside. But if I cured it and chromed it and then messed up, when I wiped, I'd take off some of the chrome. So I topped it as well so that if I do mess this bit up, then I can just um, wipe it off and nothing else is going to come off. So starting here with four lines, um, well, three lines, <laughs> making a sort of square but without the bottom line of the square and then turning each one into a little triangle from the center. And then the bottom one will join up to the bottom line of the crown. So they do curve in like the top one in the middle there um, of what we're doing here, not the very top, like a, like a pair of pants, like some Y fronts, but the side ones ended up being not curving in, but that's fine. It's small, doesn't matter. <laughs> and then um, I think I may have chromed and topped that just before doing the next step. Did I? Or was I brave and did I go straight for it? I bet I didn't. I bet I chickened out. Yes. So I cured, chromed, topped. And now we're doing these um, fur, fur de lease, fur release, fur release, fur releases, um, which I'm doing. A straight line and then a sort of C on its side and then we're turning the top part into a sort of um, teardrop and then the bottom the curved bits we're making fatter where they join the straight line I should have raised I should have 
brought them up, curled them up more. So where those arms come out, I should have gone up and down as opposed to sort of straight out. But then we just widen it at the bottom. And that was my first go. And I was really proud of that because I thought they're good enough not to redo. And it was a first go. I was very, very surprised. And then we chromed and topped. And I do end up putting a little crystal in the crown, but I don't think I filmed it. So that and breathe is our cipher. All of these nails are sort of ring finger size on me. I think if I did this as a set on someone, I'd probably want that to be on the middle or the thumb just to have more room. So the next one we're starting with a coat of white gel polish, and then I'm going to top coat it and chrome with a no wipe top and chrome onto that instead of doing the white gel paint and chroming onto that because you have to pro apply that with um, a brush and it's a bit thicker I didn't want there to be any sort of brush strokes in the chrome so I'm chroming onto a no wipe top which is how you normally chrome anyway um, again with this palette which I'm, I should have cut this I, I edited them each separately so I put what I'm using in each one and now we're seeing it again but that's fine so I'm going to chrome onto that and then I'm going to put a base coat on it because I want to add lots of little details, um, but easy. I'm doing air quotes because they're sort of easy in the sense of I don't really know how to do fancy filigree stuff. So I'm just going to make it up and hope it looks all right. Tried to copy, um, tried to find some part of the throne to copy but I couldn't get a picture zoomed in enough probably it was probably for the best because I wouldn't have made been able to make it look exactly the same so we're going to use white gel paint to add a kind of gilded effect but I'm buffing oh so I wiped and buffed the base coat oh because I wasn't going to but then I realized when I chrome it's going to stick to the base coat Wally so you could top coat but I would buff anyway so that all of this next step um, has got... Wait, no, it's come to me. If I top coated and then did this without buffing, when I chrome these bits, it would also stick to the top coat, which might mess up the sort of levels of chrome bits. <laughs> oh, fuck. Does that make sense? I wanted to do this onto a buff surface, so when I do chrome these bits, the white bits is the only are the only bits that the chrome's going to stick to. There, yes, that's what I mean. So I'm starting with a big dot because we're going to put something on that, and then I'm doing dot and then pull towards the center, and then just flicking out from the dot. So no more product on the brush. Just use the product from that dot to pull it out, and then it looks a bit fancy. Looks a bit filigree-ish so this is a test to see whether it was going to show and it does so I've chromed that but I haven't topped it so I've chromed the white bits but we haven't topped it and then I'm just going to go over the whole thing with lots of these dots and then pull and then flick out the dot and that's pretty much all I'm going to do over this maybe add a different shape I think I had a sort of diamond shape somewhere, but just lots of dot, pull, and flicks. That's it. So while I'm doing that, oh, and I'm chroming as I, curing and chroming as I go, in case I do mess up, then I can carefully wipe bits off. Would you like some facts while I'm doing that? Because I, I can't say the same thing over and over and try and make it interesting. <laughs> just don't have it in me. Right, ready? Let's see. William the First. Here we go. Are you comfortable? William's sarcophagus, which I'm guessing based on the rest of this is like a coffin. William's sarcophagus was found to have been built too small to accommodate his body. And after an attempt was made to squeeze the body into it, in the words of the English chronicle, chronic, chronicler, or... or <laughs> In the words of the English chronicler Orderic Vitalis, the swollen bowels burst and an intolerable stench assailed the nostrils of bystanders and the whole crowd. I think this is at the funeral. How gross is that? 
olden time stuff is so gross, but I quite love it. Oh, I'm adding some curves uh, just to kind of frame this. And then I didn't know what to do either side. Oh, I did two rows of that. So I just did those roses that we did in the video the other day, the little croissant roses. Um, so that's what happens next. I need to look at what's going on on the nail screen. Right. Henry the first. Oh, so we had William the first. Henry the first. When Henry died in 1135, his entrails, gross, were removed and buried in ruin in northwest France. The rest of his body was buried in England. Weird. Richard the first. Richard the first was shot through the shoulder with a crossbow outside of uh, Chalice Castle in France in 1199. The injury was serious but survivable, but the infection that followed it was not. He died two weeks later. His heart was buried separately from the rest of his body. As for the arrow that brought down Richard the Lionheart, it was a lucky shot over the side of the castle from a young boy. It became immortalised as the lion by the ant was slain. Are there any funny ones? <laughs> Oh, listen to this. Okay. Henry III was given a white bear, thought to be a polar bear, by King Hakon IV of Norway in 1252. He kept it in the Tower of London and had it taken down to the River Thames each morning to swim and catch fish. <laughs> People are so weird. Um, Edward II enacted a statute forbidding the wearing of armour in Parliament. <laughs> It remains enforceable to this day. Can you imagine Rishi Sunak rocking up to rocking up to Parliament in a full coat of arms? Sorry, Prime Minister, you know the rules. No shoes, no booze. Oh, he Henry VIII. In 1520, Henry VIII challenged the King of France, Francis I, to a wrestling match. <laughs> uh, Henry lost. I mean, serves you right. What a wanky thing to do. Henry VIII had people kiss his bed linen every morning to make sure it was not covered in poison that big imagine that's your job mama got a job <laughs> poison checker oh i hope you're rubbish at it um queen anne the, this monarch's body was so swollen when she died why is everyone swelling so much in the old days <laughs> she was so swollen when she died she had to be buried in a square coffin Oh, do you think she's, like, doing the starfish in there? <laughs> um, what else have we got? George the First. Oh, we're dusting. Oh, I've added dots, of course, um, because there were some gaps that needed filling and dots are just the perfect thing for that. So we're going to chrome those and then we'll top. And because I'd never done this before, I had to say a little prayer to the nail gods, to Selena, um, and hope that when I topped it the height difference would show um and not kind of disappear because it's the same on the same so we're topping and praise be um you can still see the height difference so it's kind of gilded type I'm floating the top coat quite thickly so that it is smooth um so that we are filling in everywhere I mean, you could, I suppose, brush it so that it feels raised on the outside as well if you want, but I didn't want, so I didn't. So that is that a one. Let's talk about what we're doing on this one, and then we'll try and find some more interesting, fun, gory death facts. <laughs> we're going to use the white gel paint on another velveted blue nail, so that has been topped with velvet. And look how slowly I paint. We're going to do some dangly shit, um, which has become the official name for dangly shit. What, other, what, what I don't know what else you could call it. And then we're going to chrome those. And I do add a couple of lines hanging down. This is going to be, um, I'm thinking like a, uh, what am I thinking? Kind of a Prince Charming, just a prince's jacket. A coat you know they have a lot of dangly shit going on they have like rope with stuff hanging off it and medals and bling i wasn't copying a picture i was just um making it up really 
So we're going to chrome those. So I've cured the white, chrome it, um, possibly top it before I do the next bit. Um, and we're going to add some bling to this. Oh, the chain, which did we use the chain the other day? Yes, it was from Colourful July, which I also have a link and a code for in the description. So I've topped that and wiped and then decided I wanted some more. Some more, some more. So we'll do that top, uh, cure, chrome, top. And then we're going to add some blingy chains and blingy bits and make it look fancy. Oh, listen to this. George V. So Lord Dawson, the royal physician of George V, gave the king a deliberately lethal dose of morphine and cocaine as he lay on his deathbed so that he would die in time to make the morning's headlines. Dawson even called his wife in London to tell her to let the editor of the Times know to hold back publication. Oh, we're using the McCart rhinestone glue for this, which is a gel. We're going to pop some on. And then I found a feather, a gold feathery feather. <laughs> so we'll plonk that on and cure it. And then this is the chain from Colourful July. So we're going to measure out how much we need and then chop it off with some cuticle nippers. And then we're going to use the same McCart gem glue because it's quite thick when you put it on and then you put something in it, it doesn't move or sort of start swimming away into a different direction, it doesn't slide, that's the word. So we'll do the top bit first and I'll rest it so that the square that we're resting is facing, is straight. And then I'll cure that and then we'll cure the bottom part as well. Um, where were we? Oh yes, Dawson, no, to hold the times, to hold back publication. Dawson pointed out the importance of the death receiving its first announcement in the morning papers rather than the less appropriate field of the evening journals. Can you imagine? Can you hurry up and die, please, so we can get you in the paper tomorrow? Not, let's see if we can have him hold out for another day. Let's, let's just hurry up the death instead. <laughs> I'm using the Daily Charm Seal It Up pen, um, the brush end of it, um, just to seal between two of the crystals um, at where we've joined at the top and the bottom but I'm also doing it in between a middle one because I want it to I don't want it too dangly I want it to stay so that we can just see the gold the bottom gold strip so they didn't cover it so it looked more more so there was more dangly shit visible and then I'm going to add some caviar beads along that gold line but I wanted to do more so I did two more lines of caviar beads but I didn't bother putting the gold underneath them because you can't really see it anyway so we added a couple more and then cured them and then I'm going to seal those in very carefully I should have used a detail brush which is much thinner um, so that I didn't get any shiny on the matte background and then we're going to do a medal uh, that was said with a question mark so we're doing a big dot of the white gel paint and then we're going to pull out from the top of the dot to get the um, the fabric although we're going to do it gold I was going to do like a red and a green sort of fabric bit but I thought it doesn't go with the rest of the set so I did it all gold and then we're going to add some crystals straight onto that chromed bit or one crystal from the king's crown mix and then we'll put some silver caviar beads around it to look like little diamonds and then on the gold um, band above it I added more white gel paint in three strips to kind of I don't know I don't know why to give it a bit of detail so it wasn't just a plain band but it doesn't show up that well um, but don't worry about the mess that the chrome looks at the moment because once we've topped the bits we want to stay chrome, we'll wipe all the all the messy bits off. So I'm adding three lines on here just to have a sort of embossed look. Okay. 
King George the Sixth. Oh, King George the Sixth in 1926, the future King George the Sixth competed in the men's doubles tournament at Wimbledon. <gasps> I love that. That's amazing. There's somebody called Athelbald, Ashthelbald, uh, the second son of Athelwolf. Athelbald, although the A and E is written, you know, where they next to each other, which isn't that pronounced like Ash, says Elon Musk. Um, was born around 834. So we're wiping off here. And you can see all the, the dusty, messy bits of chrome are gone. And that's our our um king's jacket, I guess. Prince's jacket. He's not a prince, he's the king. <laughs> um, but that's what we were going for. And then I'll tell you about Aisha Athelbald in a sec. Then we're taking the, oh, this is the blingy nail. I got a bit carried away here, which I think you'll all agree. Um, I'm taking some of the new, new Madame Glam sculpting gel, which is sticky but not sticky. And we're going to do a ball and we're going to press that onto, I have base coated over another chrome nail and we're going to press that onto that oh, okay now we're base coating so we're base coating the chrome which i did the same again white top coat chrome now base coat and we'll add the ball on there and then we're going to press some crystals into it and some caviar beads we started out <laughs> trying to make this look like the not the imperial crown the was it the st edward's crown i think but it ended up just being how much bling can i get on one nail um the idea was to um have a raised gold crown with a few bits of bling but it turns out i just covered everything in bling this was the second attempt and I was considering doing it again, but I just didn't have it in me. I'm lying. I did try and do it again. I didn't like it. So I'm pushing this into the uncured um, sculpting gel. We'll do the same. So we've done caviar beads coming out from the center of each side of that square diamond. And then we'll put a crystal in each quadrant and then we'll cure it and I will gold chrome that sculpting, that ball um, later on. But I'm just going to cure that in place for now. And then I'm going to take a big chunk of this sculpting gel and create a sort of crown. So it comes down that I was thinking at the front of the crown, but I ended up kind of, I don't know. It looks like a crown, I think, but I'm just going to speed this up because I was just faffing around and making it up. We're gonna have a column come down the center. I'm using a cuticle stick to <clears throat> sculpt this. I could have used their silicon tool, but I didn't think, silly Joseph. And then making sort of pointy crown bits either side. Um, and I did have to take off some of the sculpting gel. I put a bit too much on but I'm just using my cuticle stick to pat it down and get the shape I want. And like I say, I was going to leave that, like chrome that, and then put a few bits of bling on, which I wish I'd have done. But then also at the same time, I quite like how bling it is. I sent a picture of it to, um, in a group chat with a couple of friends. I said, is this too tacky? Like, what do you think of it for the, for the, for the, to match the rest of the set. I sent a picture of the final set. And one of them said, oh, very nice, very Mr. T. I said, I was going for more Mr. King of England, but okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll leave this uncured and then we're just going to cover it with bling and caviar beads and then we're going to cure it. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. We're going to top it first because I didn't want to have to top in and around all, all the crystals. At this point, I did think I was going to chrome it. Um, 
but we're not going to cure it yet. So I haven't cured the sculpting gel. I'm topping straight onto it uncured. And because they're both clear, then that's fine for curing. But then we're going to press in the crystals before um, curing. I don't think I needed to do that whole sculpting gel bit. I could have just put the crystal straight onto the nail in this pattern. Um, but that was realized after, <laughs> after I finished because I didn't think I was going to go over the whole thing with bling, uh, but I do. So we're adding this blue, gorgeous blue crystal and we're going to put caviar beads all around it and then we're just going to bedazzle the shit out of it. Okay, right, where were we? Asher Ethel Athel Bald. He was born around 834. He was crowned at Kingston upon Thames in southwest London. That's where I'm from. Um, well, it's my stomping ground. Um, after forcing his father, he was crowned after forcing his father to abdicate upon his return from pilgrimage to Rome. Following his father's death in 858, he married his widowed stepmother, Judith. But under pressure from the church, the marriage was annulled after only a year. That's not very gory or exciting, but interesting and weird. That's what we like, interesting and weird. George III bought Buckingham House, now known as Buckingham Palace, for, in 1761 for his wife, Queen Charlotte, to use as a comfortable family home close to St. James's Palace. <laughs> Just a comfortable, you know, 150 bedroom. I don't know how many bedrooms it's got. A lot. Okay, I'm done with, I'm done with kings and queens. Great Britain facts. For the first time, an umbrella was used for protection from the rain. Before that, the umbrella was used for protection from the sun. The first time in England, it was used for protection from the rain. That's not a surprise. The raincoat was also invented in Britain. Not a surprise. Shoelaces were invented by the British in, 19, in 1790. You're welcome. Uh, the World Wide Web was invented by British scientist Tim Berners-Lee. In the crown of the British Empire, there are 2,868 diamonds, 273 pearls, 17 sapphires, 11 emeralds and 5 rubies. I think this nail is, is a perfect replica. Um, the most famous sapphire of St. Edward is inserted in the upper cross of the crown. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and if you're going to come at me about the Kuhnor diamond, we've got a receipt. It was a gift. It costs about, it's worth about 8 million quid. You've had about 2 billion in foreign aid, okay? We're not asking for that back. Uh, now, I have gone over. <laughs> I saw a whole thing about it when the Queen died. Everyone was like, give us back our coup and old diamond. Give us back our 2, mil two billion quid then. Jeez, we've got a receipt for it. Calm down. Um, I have chromed, I have topped around the crystals in this domey bit um, so that I can chrome the sculpting gel and then we're going to top that and then I realized I needed to top everywhere else um, around all the bling not in between because we already topped that um, but around it and then we added some more caviar beads around this dome because I figured at this point why stop why stop there let's just keep going um, what other facts have we got? Ooh, to celebrate the coronation of King Richard II in 1377, fountains of wine were opened across London. That's my sort of king, except with Baileys. There's a website here that apparently thinks that England, Great Britain and the United Kingdom all being different is a fact. I mean, it is a fact, but they seem to think it's an unknown fact. Yeah, the England, that the UK and Great Britain are different. The UK actually stands for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So the UK, we've talked about this before, is England, Ireland, no, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Great Britain is the biggest island of that, is England, Scotland, and Wales. Um, and then England is England. <laughs> it's a country of countries. Um, we well, may know about their love of tea or the invention of the Indian dish chicken tikka masala, but do you know everything else about this magnificent country? Steeped in history and culture with an archaeological record dating back to the early Neolithic period and beyond. There is much to discover. Blah, blah, blah. 
Romans invaded the islands because they couldn't get enough of their of the, <laughs> the delicious oysters from Colchester and wanted to control the supply. Just ask nicely, you know. <laughs> Anywhere in Great Britain, you are never more than 70 miles from the coast. That's true. A day at the beach is just not difficult. I'm about 53 steps from the beach. Stonehenge is older than the pyramids of Giza. Oh, here I was just seeing, thinking how much easier and quicker it would have been if I'd just plonked on some massive crystals. But that is the crystal one. I did another gilded one to sort of bookend the set. And this is it. I have so many more interesting and funny facts that I'd saved to tell you about. But we'll we'll have to save that for another royal occasion, I guess. Um, this is all of them. Let me know. Does the bling one, is it too much? I mean, the crown is seriously blingy. Is it? I don't know. Um, but I hope you like this set and I hope you have some fun plans for the coronation, uh, wherever you will be enjoying it. Um, I appreciate you being here so, so much. Like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. -bye.